Well, hello folks. It's good to be with you. And I'm using the word with in an abstract kind of way. We are present to you in the spirit, and that's a good thing. Even when we're gathered together in the building, our unity in the spirit is one of the key components of our worship service. This morning I thought about a proverb that says, a threefold cord is not easily broken. And that to me brought forward the image of the Trinity, which we celebrate as Christian people, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And lately we've been putting our emphasis on the Holy Spirit because the Father is from the past, the Son is from the past, but the Holy Spirit is alive with us now. And the Holy Spirit is one with the Father and the Son. So I am inviting you to relax, to open your heart, open your mind, and let God's Spirit move in you in a way that brings blessings, not only for you, but that those blessings in you may overflow and touch all of your relations. I hope you have a good time with us for this little while, and I'm going to ask you to just humble yourself as we say a prayer of invocation. Gracious God, you are the maker of heaven and earth. You created the constellations that shine and give us guidance in the nighttime. You made the sun to rise, to travel through the sky, and to set. You, O oh God, are the giver of every good and perfect gift. We ask, O oh God, that by your Spirit you be with each and every one in the earth just now as we are going through a time of great change. I am asking, O oh God, that you put in people's heart hope rather than fear. Let them hope that what is happening now will bring a change, and that that change will make us a better human species, and it will bring pleasure to your heart. We ask, O oh God, that you glorify your own name by the Holy Spirit on this day and for this gathered people. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, church! Good morning. And now it's praise time. The first song this morning is Praise the Father. Listen to these lines. Who's the one to whom you belong? Who in your weakness has made you strong? Who fills your heart with joyful song? It is the Lord your God. Who's the one who died for us? Who's the one who forgave us for all our sins by giving up his son for us? It is God the Father. This song is all about God and what God has done for us and continues to do for, for us each day. Even in these tough times, if we put our faith in God, God will be there for us all the time. Please join us as we sing, Praise the Father.
Our next song is We Will Remember. The, in the readings today, there's, there's stories of, of God's promises to people and, and their faithfulness to that word. What we need to remember is that those aren't just stories in the Bible as action that is happening every day to us from God. And we need to be mindful and to remember that God has only got our best interests in mind and wants us to be the kind of people that, that Jesus taught us to be, to love one another and to help one another through the dark times and through the good times and, and just really know that the Bible is, is a living book and, and we're this chapter that's happening right now. So sing with us, we will remember. We will remember, we will remember, we will remember the words in your hands. We will stop and give you praise for praise and thankfulness. We will remember, we will remember, we will remember the words in your hands. We will stop and give you praise. You're our creator, our life sustainer, deliverer of comfort and joy. Throughout the ages, you've been our shelter, our peace in the midst of the storm. With signs and wonders, you showed your power, with precious blood to show us your grace. In our offer, our liberator, the giver of life in our end. We will remember, we will remember, we will remember the words of your hands. We will stop and give you praise for praise and thankfulness. When we walk through life's darkest valley, hit us, we were occupied with all kinds of things. And two things that I'd like to notice is we were occupied, we celebrated, we honored sports heroes and movie heroes. 
These folks were so precious in our society, so precious that they earned millions of dollars for amusing us, for entertaining us, and some might say for distracting us from the issues that really matter. But now that the COVID infection has spread us, the media has been giving us a different message. Professional sports is in the background. Hollywood is in the background. And all of a sudden, we are hearing that the most important people in our society are teachers, nurses, truck drivers, pharmacists, people who work in grocery stores. And what I'm going to suggest is ordinary people. And so what I'm going to say in a very brief way just now is that we are at a crossroads and we have a choice. After this is all over, after we move into the new future, what will be our values? What will we appreciate? And I am hoping that you will appreciate all those people in our society who make a difference just by being who they are and doing what they can to be God's presence in the earth. Now, saying these things, I have in view two texts in particular this morning. And you have them in front of you, and you can read them and think about them. But the first text is about a woman named Hannah. And Hannah is the second wife of a husband. And the first wife has had children, and Hannah has not. And in her culture, not having a child was a stigma. There was a shame attached to it. And she prayed, dear God, would you please give me a child? And one day she was praying in the temple, and the priest Eli heard her, and he says, go in peace. God will answer your prayer. And after that, Hannah conceived a son. And that son was named Samuel. And Samuel became the first in the prophetic tradition of the Hebrew scriptures. Samuel was a messenger of change. And he was the son of Hannah, a mother's child. Samuel preached a message of justice. Samuel preached a message of mercy, of compassion. Samuel preached that we ought not to bow down before the rich and the wealthy. We ought not to honor them in particular. What we ought to do is care for those among us who are needy. And in many ways, the text expresses a feminine spirit, the spirit of care and compassion. And at that time, God is moving in the earth to make a difference, to overcome injustice and establish justice. Now that's an Old Testament story. In the New Testament, there's another story about a young woman. And this young woman is called a virgin. That is to say, she's not able to bear a child either. Not yet. But one day, God comes to Mary, and he talks with her, and he tells her, Mary, you're going to have a son. And she says, how can that be? I don't have a husband. And God says, don't worry. Your son will be generated by my word, by my spirit. And Mary carried that son in her womb, and she sang a song of thanksgiving, a song of gratitude, a song of praise for God's gift of life that was within her. And her son, we know, was Jesus. And just like Samuel, Jesus stands in the prophetic tradition that is to say, Jesus is concerned for our future as a human species and the human earth. And God wants us to live justly 
and Jesus goes about expressing justice in his words and his deeds. He cares for the poor. He cares for the forsaken. He cares for the lost. He cares for the broken. And he resists those in power. And he tries everything that he can do to get them to repent, to change their minds, to become benefactors rather than exploiters. We, in the modern world, have opportunity to recognize that one of the major themes of the Bible is our commitment to the seeking of justice. We are called as a people, not just to be Christian, but to be good neighbors, to care for one another, to share our resources so that where we live, none go hungry, none are homeless, none are oppressed. This is a challenge for us as a people of faith. We, like Mary and Hannah, have opportunity to hear the Word of God and have an idea conceived in us, and that idea can grow within us until it reaches maturity, and then that idea will be expressed as we go about our life. I am encouraging you, as a person trusting in God, to consider which way you will go from this critical point. Which way will you commit your allegiances, your resources, to the way of justice or to the way that has been ruining our world up until this point. We are at a place of decision, and I encourage you to choose the way of God, and in this way, make a difference. As we often sing, go make a difference. God bless you as you think about these things, and as you figure out how you can be a person, together with other persons, doing what you can to make our world a better place. In the name of Jesus, Amen.
called to be banned, saying, the fires of justice burn. The fires are a refining fire. We get the junk and we burn it, and we keep the precious, the good, and the true. May God give you the grace to participate in the turning of the world. Let's each of us work to make this old world a better place, if not for us, at the very least for our children, our grandchildren, and our great-grandchildren. Grace and peace be with you as you go about the way of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit. Amen.